Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and my shiny new Porsche. This is a 2006 Porsche Cayenne Turbo S I picked up last week for just nine and a half grand. It's got 162,000 miles on the clock now, 521 brake horsepower, and I love it. Holy cow! So I found the kick down. Woof! God damn, this thing flies! <laughs> Christ! <laughs> All right, it hadn't felt that quick before. Wow! Oh my God, that! That felt like five seconds to 60. Up until now, I hadn't really been convinced it was all that fast. Woo! Because without that kick down, you kind of wait for the turbos to come on song, but hit that button and the fun just starts, baby. God damn. The 2006 Turbo S was essentially a run out model for the 955 series. So it had a few extra features, extra cooling, for the two turbos and the engine itself. And it also has this raised bonnet. Now the engine is, is the same size, it's a 4.5 litre, the same as the standard turbo. I don't know if this actually does anything extra, but it sure does look cool. These headlights were pretty controversial when they were first released. Certainly I think a lot of Porsche purists when it came to the 911 of the same era, really hated the quote unquote fried egg headlights. I think they've kind of grown quite well. These are actually ZID, XID Xenon units, so they're pretty bright, all things considered. No, they're not LEDs, and they're certainly never going to be as bright as LEDs, but I think they're certainly functional. And it's certainly a distinct look. Uh, I think this is now aging quite gracefully uh, compared to other SUVs. Don't forget the Turbo S, 521 brake horsepower, two and a half tons. You're going to need the brakes to be able to stop it. Luckily, 350 millimeter discs. These are massive and they're also massively expensive. I think new from Porsche, they're about sort of 1500 quid fitted, which is pretty chunky. And I'm glad I didn't have to pay that price. Tire wise, I've taken out the worn winter tires and replaced them with some Goodyear Eagle F1 asymmetrics. They are really comfortable. They're reasonably quiet on the motorway and certainly better than some completely shagged winter tires. I think this might be my most practical project car to date as well, because this boot is absolutely massive. It is gonna be able to easily take all of my equipment, but also anything the family throws at it too. Because after all, this is an SUV, so it's kind of a nice family vehicle. And yes, I know it's not an estate car, and I'm sure there's loads of people who say, you should have got an estate car already, but finding an estate car with air suspension is a bigger challenge than you might think. Under the hood is a 4.5 litre V8 with two turbochargers pushing out 521 brake horsepower and 720 newton meters of torque, which you're gonna to need to move this in excess of two and a half ton weight. One of the biggest reliability problems of the 955 series of Cayenne is bore score, particularly on the 4.5S, which is one of the reasons why I was looking at a turbo. They don't have the Locosil uh, liners that tend to degrade over time. It also has oil sprays that go into the pistons that help keep that looped up. Again, further reducing the chance of something like bore score, which makes the engine one of the more reliable bits of this car. Moving on to the interior, we have a sumptuous all black leather interior. I spent some time over the weekend giving it a nice clean and scrub with some various leather product. It has come up really, really nicely. These seats are amazingly comfortable on a road trip. Uh, from the journey down to Birmingham to a bunch of other driving I've been doing over the last couple of days, these seats feel fantastic. These also have the most powerful heated seats I have ever experienced on any car of any price point. They are incredibly hot on their maximum setting, which I think is gonna be perfect for the winter. In the front seat, you have this lovely elevated uh, position. You have quite a large steering wheel, larger than I thought, really. Uh, it feels kind of bus-like from time to time when I'm using it. But again, this is a big, heavy beast. It doesn't really surprise me when they've put a bigger steering wheel in. This, being a 2006 run-out model, is really well specified. Porsche have a bit of a reputation for not really giving you many things as standard. The list on this car that comes as standard is massive. So you have the, uh, the extra controls there. You also have controls for the Triptronic gearbox, so you can um, move up and down the gears if you so choose. I haven't actually done that. It doesn't really feel in the nature of this car, to be honest. This is more of a powerful long-distance cruiser than it is a B-Road Blaster, but it's nice to have the option when you need it. 
It also has an Alcantara headliner, which feels amazing and feels so much better quality than your standard cloth. I didn't even realize that was a, a, a possibility on uh, Cayennes. So it's really, really nice, high class touch that really just builds the ambiance of this vehicle. The infotainment, it's a bit prehistoric. It's from 2006 after all. So it doesn't have CarPlay, doesn't have Bluetooth, it does have an in-dash CD player, a six CD changer in the back and also a six DVD changer in the back as well. I don't know how useful that's going to be and I may look at swapping this out for a, a CarPlay system. The only downside is that this has the Bose upgraded sound which sounds phenomenal and it's got a subwoofer in the back but it uses fiber optic so I would need to get uh, an accessory to convert the audio into um, into into the fiber optic but also i may lose some features as well uh some lose the, the rear subwoofer and the rear speakers some lose the steering wheel controls ideally i'd like to find a solution that maintains all of those features but just gives me a more modern head unit i'll have to do some investigating this was originally designed as a fairly capable off-roader. I don't think Porsche wants to enter the SUV 4x4 market with a subpar off-road product, even if realistically the majority of owners were never going to go off-road. So this has a front and rear locking differential. So you can set the terrain modes for like off-road, mountainous, on-road, etc., etc. And because this car also comes with air suspension, you can of course raise and lower the height of the car, but also set the shock absorbers to be both uh, in comfort, normal or sport settings. I don't really feel much of a difference when I set it to sport, um, but I normally exist in either normal or comfort. I think generally it just works really, really well with this car. So it wouldn't be one of my project cars without it being a little bit broken. Luckily, there's only a few things that are. First off, the parking sensors are a bit, a bit iffy, shall we say. I think the front two are damaged, and so they're a little bit schizophrenic when they start working. And the rears, they don't even work at all, not a sausage. It's uh, caught me out more than once uh, in the last week or so, so uh, I definitely need to get these fixed. Could be a module problem. It could just be a duff sensor that's knocking out all of them. I'll need to figure it out. Another thing that doesn't work, the panoramic sunroof. Now, Porsche doesn't have a particularly good history when it comes to the Cayenne and sunroof, so a lot of the time they're a lot more hassle than they're worth. I do really appreciate the extra light that comes in, but it's a shame that we can't open this sunroof. Maybe it can be repaired, maybe it can't, I don't know. There is a manual override, so you can use a little crank to actually uh, open it up. And I am going to have to do that at some point soon because I'm concerned about the drain holes being filled. And as soon as they're filled, the water overflows and it overflows into the electrics and God knows what could happen there. The seats in the back are fantastic. There is plenty of knee room. This is with the front passenger seat pretty much all the way back. I feel amazingly comfortable and I have no doubt in my mind that even four up with adults, this would be a really comfortable long distance tour. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. It's comfortable, it's fast, it's practical. It's a sensible family vehicle, which makes it a perfect, perfect next project car. There is no doubt in my mind that this is gonna financially ruin me, but I'm gonna love the journey all the same. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this car. And with that, I'll catch you down the road.